Okay, so the blah blah is over, and we start with a real simple example. My God, I, I, saw, I saw your face when you saw some, uh, some, uh, <laughs> some equations coming up. Compared to what's com uh, going to come later, this is peanuts, so you're in trouble. <laughs> you're in bad shape. Uh, so, <coughs> it's a very, uh, for us, those uh, strange animals called mathematicians, it's just a very simple example. I often call this uh, example the S example. As for simple, but also for silly or stupid. I have two more examples which uh, they qualify of an S. So if you survive through the equation that are going to float around in a minute, uh, those two examples are going to be about the hola. So who knows? After all, the president uh, was asking questions in the, uh, to, to, to the group. So what is an hola? Come on, young people, you don't know what an hola is? Okay, uh, Jean Salençon was, uh, you knew, but you were, uh, I mean, that's typical French, uh, French school kids. You, know? you ask them a question, don't answer. And uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, in fact, yes, you know, you go, uh, you go and see uh, any kind of sport events, and then you have those people, uh, about 100,000 people, and suddenly you have this wave propagating in the stadium. Huh? Uh, this, uh, okay, we are going to discuss the Ola. I'm doing my best to keep them awake. Huh? <laughs> uh, and the, the other example, uh, the other example is going to be about at what time a meeting should start. In a romantic country, where of course no meeting will start exactly on time. Not in a mechanical country like our neighbor, uh, uh, but in a, <laughs> in a, <laughs> country with culture and uh, some idea of uh, you know, starting on time is almost a crime. So it, uh, we, we, we should be a little bit late. <laughs> or you could pick up the, uh, your... your uh, <laughs> um, okay, so the, um, the, uh, at what time should a meeting start? So that's going to be uh, the come uh, much later. And, uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll finish with, uh, with uh, data sorting and uh, Facebook applications and movie industries. So this is uh, just trying to motivate the young crowd. Huh? Um, <coughs> but it's in fact true. Uh, okay, so uh, this is uh, what I'm going to describe is uh, a, a very simple, it is in fact not new. It's a position player, so a position game. So suppose that, uh, you, you know, suppose that we go to the beach. You have beautiful beach. Yesterday, Philippe took us. Uh, uh, to, to, to a magnificent place, beautiful beach, beautiful weather. I mean, that's uh, very impressive. So you go to the beach, and uh, you are thinking about where I should put my towel on the beach, right? And, uh, you know, they are, they are various things. There are other people. And uh, there might be locations of interest. For us French, uh, French people, locations of interest means where can we drink and eat? So there might be one or two or a few locations where you can, uh, 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 where you can have an ice cream or anything. And uh, lots of people. So the question is whether you put your towels knowing that you may not want to be in a very crowded place and you may not want to be too far away because it's hot from a point of interest. It looks like a, a, a strange example. It's in fact, the dual problem of a, uh, of a problem which was set up by Otteling, a very famous Dutch economist a long time ago, about ice cream carts. So ice cream carts going to, uh, to the beach, where, th where should the vendors set up their carts? Okay. Um, I'll come back to that later on. And um, <coughs> uh, I forgot to say something which will come later on anyway. So this is uh, like the beach, N players, N large, lots of people going to the beach, have to decide to choose a position in the, on the beach according to a certain criterion that depends on, on the others. If you don't want to be in a too crowded place, depends on the others. So what is the notion of, a, a, of an, a Nash equilibrium? So each guy would try to minimize, but this depends on the others, which are also trying to minimize. You cannot minimize simultaneously n functionals. Okay? So the, this very classical notion of Nash equilibrium, and Nash is one of the two uh, uh, mathematicians uh, that got uh, uh, 
Nobel, the Nobel Prize in Economics, and Nash was the second one historically, and the, we got the Nobel Prize in Economics for this, uh, the introduction of this notion, which is a very natural notion, which is unfortunately plagued with lots of difficulties, but that's a very natural notion. So what is a notion? So it's uh, a Nash equilibrium, a point, a set of points, a set of positions of the towers for all the people is going to be uh, a Nash equilibrium if whenever you fix all of them but one, in the remaining variable, since all the others have been fixed, the, the corresponding point in the equilibrium should be a minimum of this restricted function. So you restricted the ice functional by fixing all the other points but the ice one, and you minimize with respect to the ice variable, and it should be a minimum. So in fact, the, the, characteriz the characterization of the ice guy depends on the characterizations of all the others. So it's really a fixed point. It's really an equilibrium. You cannot just compute one and then the other, and then the third one doesn't work like that. They are all entwined. Uh, they, there are lots of difficulties with the notion. It's uh, highly non-unique. Uh, existence might be a problem, and so on. And so the question that, uh, that's a basic question is, as n goes through infinity, if there are lots and lots of people, does the problem become simpler? Why should we expect something of that sort? Well, uh, there is the history of physics and the history of mechanics for that, uh, fortunately, which tells us, you know, for instance, if we look, if we want to understand how to the temperature in this room evolves, okay, the air is quite still, probably very low speed. Uh, so we have good models, equations, mathematical equations, like heat equation, if there is a flow motion, certainly incompressible Navier-Stokes equations should be fine. A bunch of essentially four equations that are going to give us a, a rather good description of what, uh, yeah, the, how the temperature is evolving in that room. So we have a mo good mathematical model thanks for centuries uh, of, uh, of physics and mechanics. I mean, at least m more than a century of modeling between Euler in 1755 and, and, uh, and, uh, um, uh, and Navier in 19, 1842. Anyway, to cut us that story short, we have such models. And clearly, we have good models because we are not obliged to follow all the motions of all the gas molecules in that room. Otherwise, that would be untractable. Okay? Or even worse, thinking about the electrons in the molecules without even, uh, even discussing the, uh, sub, uh, uh, the uh, uh, subnuclear particles in the nuclei. Yeah? Okay, so clearly, because we have a huge number of gas molecules, it's possible to write a rather simple equation, simple looking equations, that uh, one can use in order to give a good prediction on how the temperature is going to evolve. Question is that instead of having gas molecules, you have all those people on the beach. Is it possible to let n go to infinity and to have a simpler problem that you can use and solve? And the answer is yes. Of course, you need an assumption, and that's what about Minfield games uh, are. So Minfield theory is very much related to the spirit of what was done in, in statistical mechanics and statistical physics historically, a long time ago. Indistinguishable player is a crucial assumption, because exactly as uh, you know, if we are dealing in statistical physics, statistical mechanics, if all the particles are completely uh, uh, different one from the other, there is nothing you can say. There, you wouldn't be able to write down to, to say anything about the motion of air if somehow we, are, we had infinitely many kinds of, uh, of gas, mole gas molecule in, in, in the air. So uh, the, uh, it's, a request, it's uh, uh, required to say that the particles are identical, that you, that you have several classes of particles. Uh, here the same. So I'm going to assume during most of this talk that I have a single, not all of the talk, but I have a single population uh, of a, which is homogeneous in the sense that the players are indistinguishable. What does that mean? This means that basically we can exchange our labels. And our labels, let's think of them as being our names. Clearly, you know, uh, both Philip and I are going to the beach. Our 
thousands and thousands of people on that be long beach. If suddenly I decide to call myself Philippe Cialet and he decides to call, uh, uh, to call himself Pierre Louis Lyon, it's not going to change anything about the density of towels on the beach, right? And that's exactly what Indisagreeable is about, exchanging labels. But it, this has a major consequence, namely that the criterion necessarily has a very, very specific form, is that the thing that each player is trying to minimize is in fact a single function, there is a theorem behind that, but let's forget about details, a single criterion that depends on my position, the i's position, and in a symmetric way, and the uh, positions of the others. Symmetric because all the others play the same role. They can exchange their names. They are the same for me. And then, uh, since I'm also the same than the other, the criterion should depend on I. Okay? So suddenly, we have now a structure which uh, uh, is closer to a structure that can be used in order to let n go to infinity. Uh, and in fact, this is what we, one needs to say. Uh, what one needs to say is that the right way to look at a function of a symmetric collection of, uh, 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 of points is to forget the number of points as to say, instead of having loads of points, you build up what in statistics would be called the empirical measure, uh, which is those Dirac masses, so you know, counting where xj is and in a very violent way and uh, zero outside. So this is now a probability, which is a probability measure, and the end disappears because uh, uh, that's the role of the abstraction. Thanks to the abstraction, we now have a shortcut and we can forget about the, uh, uh, about the end in terms of a mathematical setting. The, the price to pay for that is that instead of uh, uh, working with functions with a large number of variables, we have now to, to work with functions over the space of probability measures. And that's an infinite dimensional operation. Okay. If we forget those, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, those things, and if you don't want to think too hard about those things, uh, because uh, I didn't bring any, enough aspirin for all of you. But anyway, so in case you, 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 you get a violent headache by the end of my lecture. So anyway, so the, the, mm, the, uh, uh, do not think too much about it. And look at this theorem. Is that Nash equilibria converge as n goes to infinity to solutions of this weird problem that I'm going to explain in a minute. But let me emphasize one point. The point is that instead of looking at the positions of n players, I'm going to look at this probability, which is in some sense the density of towels on the beach. So what those models tell you, they didn't teach you on where to put your towel. You know how to do that. But what those models are trying to do is to say, if everybody has the same desire in terms of putting out their towels, not too far from a place of interest, and uh, possibly not in a too crowded place, then you can predict what's uh, going to be the repartition, the uh, distribution of, uh, of towers on the beach. Okay? And the distribution, a distribution is a probability. And so you look at a certain probability, and it's like a Nash equilibrium in the sense that you freeze all the other players at the M, and then you have a function of a remaining variable, and you minimize that one. So that's clearly what uh, Nash equilibrium. Freeze all the other, minimize. But this is true for any player. What is any player in a continuum? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, any point in the support of M. The definition of the support of a measure is just outside the support, the measure is zero. There is no one. Outside the support, M is zero, there, is no, there are no players. So a generic player is just a, a, any point in the support of the measure. And so you get this strange minimization problem, right? Where you have a probability density and a minimization problem, and you want to say that the support of the measure in the set of minima of all those players. This is typical of a Nash equilibrium. Here you have an equilibrium. Huh? Given M, you get the set of minima. And then you have to make sure that the set of minima is, uh, it contains the support of M. 
So it turns out that uh, thanks to some uh, deep mathematical properties, but very elementary about the uh, set of probability measures, you have general existence stability results and some uniqueness uh, results that I don't want to uh, insist upon in the general case. I want to give you, so there are formulas, but I'm going to explain them orally, okay? Not to worry. So uh, saying that this is a bitch, one of my favorite example is uh, uh, that I mention always uh, during those lectures is uh, the um, uh, either the beach or uh, for French people and uh, a few other European countries, including even the mechanical ones. Uh, uh, one of the important discussions in families in, uh, uh, during the year is uh, where are we going to spend our vacations in, uh, uh, in summer, okay? So all kinds of tractations and so on. So here is, uh, you should think that the f of xi measures the desire to go, let's say, near the sea. Okay? While here you're measuring how many people might be there. Okay? So, uh, so there is a certain scale here denoted by epsilon, because typically when you are, in the when you are on the beach, uh, the fact that you may have uh, lots of people one kilometer away is irrelevant. You want to see a few meters around, right? That's where it matters. If you're going to a vacation place, then the uh, typical length is going to be more in terms of miles. Uh, you want to know uh, in, you know, in, in a ball of radius a few miles, how many people should be there. So it's natural to normalize this. This is like a frequency. Frequency in terms of n and frequency in terms of scale. So is this creates a number, you count the number of people which are in a, in a certain distance and normalize this. And, and you, uh, now part of the modeling is about choosing this function g, which is going to measure how much you hate being in a crowded place or how much you like being in a crowded place. Since I'm minimizing, if g is decreasing, this means that I really want to be in a crowded place, when G is increasing, this means that uh, uh, we don't want to be in a crowded place. So typically, I would say that's uh, a joke I'm always making at that point. Uh, the um, the uh, uh, typically normal people tend to prefer to go to places where there are not too many people. So G is increasing. There are a certain class of abnormal people who prefer to be in places that are extremely crowded, and they have a name, they are called teenagers. <laughs> and uh, don't start throwing stuff at me, huh? okay. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, <coughs> uh, and we will see uh, what, uh, uh, what are the crucial differences. Normal people, G is increasing. I don't want to be in a crowded place, uniqueness. This automatically, there will be a single distribution appearing. Crowds, you want to be in a crowded place, non-uniqueness, instability. Very easy to understand. Suppose that you have two places. Let me just finish that sentence. Suppose that you have two places of interest. And people want to crowd. Well, they can pack around one place or pack around the other place. Two solutions. And then fashions and this is unstable and so on. Yes, Felipe. The, this um, uh, growing being increasing or decreasing is something that's in particle or is. No, this, this is uh, in such simplistic model, I'm just taking it everywhere. So it's a globally increasing function, globally decreasing function. People would like to go to a place where there are Absolutely. many people, but somebody should be there to buy the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with you. Uh, so uh, those are just two extreme cases so we understand how those things work. But you, you, I agree. I, of course, agree with you. Okay. <coughs> End of the example. So now let me jump. Okay, are you ready? This is going to be painful. Uh, you know, I, there are painful things in, in life that are unavoidable. Uh, like going to the dentist. I hope there are no dentists or dentist family in the, in the audience, right? It's absolutely uh, uh, necessary, it's extremely useful, and it's not really fun. No? <laughs> so that's a dentist session is coming.